Hello wonderful people, it is Genevieve and in this video we're going to learn how to paint eyes. And this video is part of a digital art course that I designed as a month-long YouTube series, so it is totally free. And you can definitely choose to only watch this one specific video if all you care about is how to paint ice. Or you can take on the challenge of improving our art skills by drawing along with the community every day. And if you want to do that, make sure to check out my website where the full schedule for the entire challenge is going to be. And also make sure to subscribe as well as ring the bell so you don't miss any of the upcoming textures that are going to be part of this course. All you need for this tutorial is some sort of a digital art software and I will be using Procreate on the iPad Pro. But you can definitely use pretty much anything that has layers in it. So Photoshop, Corel Painter, Krita, Affinity Designer. Honestly, most mainstream and not even like that mainstream <laughs> digital art software uh, will do for this tutorial. I will be suggesting just really basic digital art brushes. So basically the one that come with your software, they're definitely gonna work. And I will also include a free color palette in the description below, but otherwise you can pick your own colors if that's more what you're into. And if you are watching this video in uh, the course, you also need to set aside, I would say 15 to 25 minutes, depending whether you're on day 29 or 30 of the program. And with that being said, let's start drawing. So the first thing you will want to do is to create a new canvas and the size is totally up to you depending on what you're using this illustration for. If you're just practicing, I recommend something like 2000 per 2000 pixels. I also recommend setting your background to a neutral color if you're just practicing. So if you have the color palette, any of the grays on the right hand side are neutral grays. Otherwise you just pick a gray <laughs> that you like. And we're going to start by creating a few of our layers, so kind of the base layers. So the first one is actually going to be named base, and you're going to lower the opacity of this one around 80 or 90% because ice does have some transparency to it. You're then going to create another layer. This one is going to be set as a clipping mask, and you're going to rename it to deep blue. You are going to change the uh, blending mode to multiply and leave the opacity at 100%. The next layer is going to be also a clipping mask. This one you're going to rename to light blue. And what a clipping mask does, by the way, is everything you're going to draw on these clipped layers is going to stay between or inside, I should say, the shape of the base layer. So that's really helpful in saving time. And this light blue layer, you're going to change the blending mode of to linear light and you're going to lower the opacity around 70%. The last layer we're going to create for this stage of the tutorial is also a clipping mask. You're going to rename it to streaks and you're going to change the blending mode of it to add and lower the opacity around 50%. And with that done, we're ready to go back to our base layer and we're going to select a really nice blue grayish type of color that is fairly bright. It can be a bit uh, greenish as well. And you can use your favorite brush for this. In my case, I'm going to use the dry ink brush. And all you want to do is draw the silhouette of the shape that you want your block of ice to be. So for this tutorial, I'm just going over a sphere, so I'm going to draw a circle. When you have your basic silhouette, go and select the deep blue layer. And you're going to select a deep blue color. <laughs> and still with any brush that you like, you're going to scribble... Um, scribbles <laughs> in the bottom part of your eyes because that's something that you see quite often in natural eyes the bottom part tends to have these really nice blue hues and then you're gonna go with a smudge tool i like the stucco brush from procreate but you can use any smudge tool that you like and by the way the smudge tool is present in most digital art software and it's usually this like finger icon and what you're going to do is you're going to create this really nice movement and texture by dragging your scribbles upwards. So you don't want to blend them in perfectly and you do want to leave a little bit of a gap um, on the bottom edge. So you do want to see some of that original base color. But you do just want to create this really nice texture that looks like streaky deep blue. You're then going to select your uh, light blue layer as well as a lighter blue. And you're going to redo basically the same steps. This time only it's going to be on the top part of your eyes. So you just scribble with your light blue and then you drag it down. This time it's going to be downwards, uh, creating really cool textures and movements inside of your eyes. And at this point, it still looks pretty cool, but 
it doesn't look like ice at all. So in this next step, that's what we're gonna do. So go ahead and select your streaks layer as well as a very light, 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 light blue greenish type of color. And with your same brush, you're just going to draw kind of streaks inside the eyes. And that's very typical of natural eyes. You would get streaks that go from the top to the bottom and that are fairly straight, but have a little bit of curves to them. And once you have a few of them, I wouldn't go too crazy, like maybe two or three is good. You're going to uh, kind of scribble with the same color towards the inside or like the center of your eyes piece. <laughs> so if you have a line that is more on the right, your scribble is going to be towards the left. And if you have a line that is on the left of your piece, your scribble is going to be towards the right. So make sure you peek at the video. It's going to make a whole lot more sense than what I'm saying, probably. But yeah, basically all you want is you just want to drag in that, that light, um, lighter color towards the center part, the inside of your ice block. Speaking of which, we're actually going to use the smudge tool, again, set to whichever smudge tool you like, to really drag it in towards the center. So you're going to go across the uh, direction that you were scribbling in. So if your scribbles were uh, from top to bottom, your dragging is going to be from left to right. If you were an angle like I am, it's going to be <laughs> the opposite. But yeah, basically all you want is to really create this nice texture and movement that is going towards the inside of your ice piece, block, sphere, whatever you're drawing. So I don't know about you, but I think this is starting to look much more like ice. But it does look like very, very flat ice. So we're going to create a few more layers to help add more dimension and just more dynamism in general to the piece. The first one is going to be a clipping mask that you're going to rename to Frost. And you're going to change the blending mode of it to screen and keep the opacity at 100%. The next layer you're going to create is also going to be a clipping mask. This one you're going to rename it to Bubbles. And you're going to change the blending mode to Add. And you're going to lower the opacity quite a lot, so somewhere between 20 and 30%. It doesn't have to be super precise. The next layer is also going to be a clipping mask. This one you're going to rename it to Cracks and you're gonna change the blending mode of it to add as well. And you're gonna lower the opacity somewhere between 50 and 60%. The next layer, you guessed it, it is a clipping mask. This one you are going to rename to light and you're gonna change the blending mode this, one, this time to overlay or soft light. One of those, um, they're both gonna really, really look great. And you're gonna create another layer. This is also a clipping mask. This one you're gonna rename it to shadow. And you're going to change the blending mode to either linear burn or multiply and you're going to lower the opacity around 70 80 percent and actually you know what you're going to put the shadow layer below the light layer you're then going to go back and select your frost layer and with your same super pale bluish greenish type of color and your same brush in my case i'm using again the dry ink brush that comes with procreate you're going to very lightly add some white on the edges of your eyes and this is kind of going to mimic a little bit of a surface frost that you get sometimes on natural eyes and again like for every other steps you're going to go very very roughly here you're just going to scribble because the next step you probably guessed it by now is just to use the smudge tool to blend it in and again you're going to go inwards so towards the center of your ice piece and that's going to create this really cool texture that adds a whole lot to the final product even though it's a super simple and easy step in my mind at least it makes a world of difference once you have your frost done um you can see here it's like really cool anyway once you have your frost done go ahead and set your bubble layer and still with the same color, same brush, brush, not smudge tool, <laughs> you're going to draw some little circles. Um, they can be hollow or filled in depending on the feel that you want. I'm going to go fill in. And you're going to draw them either one, two or three together. And you can just sprinkle them a little bit all over your eyes. And that again is something very typical of natural eyes. Um, 
not so much with like ice that you would get in your freezer, but natural ice that you would get outside um, definitely does have little bubbles like that in it. And it just adds a little bit more details and make your piece feel a bit more complete, at least, at least to me. <laughs> Another little thing that you can add uh, that is very typical of natural ice is cracks, but this time on the surface. So we have our streaks inside here, but we're also going to add some cracks that are on the surface. So they're going to follow the form of whichever ice piece that you're drawing a little bit more. And what I mean by that is here I'm drawing a sphere, so my cracks are going to curve along with the sphere. And there's no secret here. You're using the same little brush that you've been using since the start you're also using the same super bright blue greenish type of color and you're just drawing cracks uh, I like to keep them very thin I just feel like it's more subtle um, and I just like it that way you could draw very deep cracks as well but yeah I, I quite like keeping them very very thin and barely there but they still bring a whole lot to the, um, the result in general. And by this point, our texture is pretty much done. All we have left to do is to add some lights and shadows to make it feel a bit more three-dimensional. So go ahead and select your shadow layer as well as a purplish grayish type of color, which was not in the color palette, but I just added it so it's gonna be there when you download it. And I recommend for this step that you use a super soft round brush, which is usually like very easy to find. It's kind of a, the most basic brush of them all. And you're just going to draw the environmental shadows. So in this case, since we're just drawing or I'm just drawing a sphere in the middle of nowhere, I'm just going to pretend that there's a light source that comes from the top left. So I'm just going to have this basic shadow on the bottom. But if you're drawing like a massive iceberg or something and you have a polar bear well that's the layer you would draw the drop shadow or the shadows that the polar bear casts on the ice basically if you are drawing a standalone piece of ice i recommend also erasing a little line on the edge to add just more contrast and once you have your shadow go ahead and with a super light bluish type of color on your light layer you're gently going to brush just a section where your main light is going to be um, I recommend having fairly soft edges, so again, you can come in with your smudge tool and just blend them in a little bit. Since ice, or at least natural ice, is not perfectly smooth, you're rarely going to get super sharp edges on your light, so just keep that in mind. And the final few steps are super simple. You're going to create two more layers below everything, so below your base layer. The first one you're going to rename to Drop Shadow. And you're going to change the blending mode to either linear burn or multiply and you're going to lower the opacity quite a lot so around 60 percent and the second one is also going to be below everything you're also going to rename it this time it's going to be to drop a light and the blending mode of this one is going to be <laughs> i can't spell drop light there you go it's going to be um hard light and you're going to lower the opacity again around 60 percent Going back on your drop shadow, this time you're going to select your purplish grayish type of color and your soft brush and you're just going to draw the shadow that the piece of ice would cast on the ground. And that's if your, your piece of ice, you know, is resting on the surface. It just really helps kind of situating it in, in its environment. And the very last thing you're going to do is going to be selecting your drop light layer as well as the bright blue color that you used or some of the lights and you're going to pr like understand where your light comes from so in this case like I said it's going to be on the top left and you're going to draw the light that would be coming through the eyes and kind of shining on the bottom surface so this is a very subtle little detail but it is really interesting to add because you know ice is not perfectly opaque there is some transparency to it so you're gonna get sort of a it's not a reflection but you're gonna get that feel on your surface on your ground as well so there you go this was how to paint ice in pretty much any digital art software if you are following the program make sure to come back to this video for day 30 so day 29 was just practicing the texture in the shape of a sphere if you are following the program day 30 is going to be drawing the same exact same technique so using the same layers and everything but this time you're going to draw eyes in context if you enjoyed this video make sure to give it a thumbs up because it really does help the channel 
And before you leave, don't forget to subscribe because I put out new videos like this one every week, especially during the month of January, where we're going to cover a total of 13 different textures spread across five teams. So make sure not to miss that and I will see you soon.